The fucking eyes dry. Now we're recording and you're going to start with that shit. Okay, folks, welcome to episode number 42 of the Off Center Archers. I am Anthony. This is Dry Eye Stephanie. Yeah, Dry Eye Steph's uh, <laughs> had to go take her contacts out, contacts out right before we started recording here because she was all red-eyed and looking stoned. God, my fucking... He, he just, anyone who wears contacts out there knows you get to the end of that day and they're just... They're done. They're done and your eyes are just all itchy and it just, it just sucks. <laughs> Don't want to walk around the streets looking like a stoner squeezing Visine every five minutes, huh? Yeah, especially with our kids. <laughs> I, I don't think they'll put child, me on the... Child services, bitches. Yeah, I know. I'll have them knocking on my door because my eyes are red. My fucking contacts, all you goddamn people. You know, I, I, I just have to say on a side note, you know, I just I just thought of this. We were just watching uh, that movie Twister. Okay. So all you people out there, it's, it's from the mid-90s. And it's about tornadoes and everything. If you haven't, if you have no clue what we're talking about, no, some people might live under a rock. Then you need that to go true. watch. You need to go watch the movie. It's called Twister. It's a very good movie. It's probably one of the, I, I, I don't know. To me, it's like one of the best movies of all time. But it really puts shit in perspective. Like you see people, they they, they have no warning, and their house gets completely wiped out. Mm -hmm. And what happens if like you just wake up one day and all your shit's gone? Like it's just shit. It's just stuff. It's. No, but your shit doesn't just go somewhere when one of those tornadoes rips through your neighborhood. It goes into a tree. It relocates your fucking house into the next town. I know. It just, you know, you know it, it puts you in perspective. Like, you don't need all this extra shit. Like, it's just stuff. It's always, it could be replaced. Okay, yeah, it's stuff. Yeah, that I can agree with. I don't know. I'm just, as a side note. I don't know. What's going to end up happening with us? We're going to grab the kids and the bows and run out of the house. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, no, I got the kids and then we're, we're ducking out of the house. That's it. Screw all no. the rest of this stuff. All right. Well, as I alluded to in the uh, road clip there, I did change one part on my bow, which was my peep sight. Mm -hmm. I already happen to have a specialty archery standard quarter inch peep sight. Um, I had been wanting to try one of the hooded ones like you had on your bow. Right. And now that you've decided to sell your stinger and since you're not using it anymore you're pretty obsessed now with your evolve yeah that's uh that's another thing we're selling the stinger it's time to just let right. go i don't need to keep it just to stare at it and i'd rather someone be shooting it than oh then um, just sitting there collecting sitting, dust. yeah because honestly i like i really really like the evolve and that's not going to go anywhere so right so what i did was i took the hooded peep sight that was in your stinger off and then just re-put a standard quarter-inch peep sight and put in, in the original actual green peep sight back into the string. Right. Um, and then I, you know, I switched everything over to mine and installed everything. And I mean, everything went smoothly. Everything, you know, I put it, I happened to take a black Sharpie beforehand, so I knew exactly where I was tying my string. Mm -hmm. So when the peep sight was right in the same exact spot, the string wasn't twisting. And when you look at the standard quarter-inch uh, specialty archery peep sight compared to the hooded one, the main portion of the frame is is identical. Mm -hmm. So it sat exactly where the old one was. Every time I draw back, it's still dead straight. And, I mean, the, well, shooting it, the difference is noticeable immediately, in my opinion. You know, especially, you know, having either a verifier or a clarifier or whatever right. in, screwed into it. There always seemed to be a glare in my non-hooded one. Now, I thought it was just my vision. I always wear glasses while we're at the range, even though I normally have a hat on. Um, well, uh, sometimes the, gla like the glasses, depending on your lens and your, you know, that right. you have on your frame, right. it, it can create a glare that you you might not realize. I mean, I don't really wear my I wear my contacts the right. majority of the time, so I, the time. I never yeah I never shoot in glasses, so I'm not really the one to to comment too much on that factor. Yeah, I always have my uh, glasses on. Yeah, but it's also because of my job. Yeah, I, I weld a lot. I do a lot of grinding and stuff like that at work. So me gets wearing under contacts, the, yeah. I'm screwed if a metal filing gets under one. But you did try a couple times. You do have contacts that you would try. Yeah, I wear them here and there. I mean. You just put on to go like at the range, you know, a couple hours before work. And then once you go to work, you'd take them out. Right. Um. Well, plus that was also a trial pair. And, you know, I've worn them like 10 times in six months. Yeah, you're not. No, yeah. I'm not a contact person. I don't like sticking my fingers in my eyes. You know, like I've always said, I'm I'm a heavy mechanic, so my hands are normally like leather and scratchy and shit. Anyway, so not something I want to touch my eye with. But anyway, 
back to the topic there. Uh, hmm. The difference in the peep side was like night and day, though. I mean, no glare anymore. Even right. though, granted, I did end up taking the verifier out because now I have the times two uh, magnifier in my HHA optimizer. Right. And, you know, I mean, I had to screw a eighth inch adapter in. Because the, the, you know, especially the archery, when you get the quarter inch, adapter, the quarter inch peep sight, they send you an eighth inch adapter in case you want to put an eighth inch verifier or clarifier or whatever into it. Gives it gives you options. Right. It gives you a ton of options. And you don't have to constantly replace your peep sight in the right. process. So, you know, I took the verifier out because it was, it was not working with the magnifier, which is way too damn blurry. It was actually less blurry with nothing in there. So I just to make the sight housing rematch up, I screwed the eighth inch adapter in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, you actually posted the picture. I was hitting, I mean, we were both having a really good range day on that was we go, Thursday or Friday. Well, which one was it? Thursday. No, wait. It was Friday. Yeah, Friday. It was Friday. I mean, we were both nailing Friday. X's nonstop. Yeah. No, I was having a really good day. Um, you absolutely obliterated the fucking X out of your target. Like, there's a big hole. I'm just going to keep shooting the hole. Yeah. I uh, I had a really good day. It's on your glasses. Sorry, something fell on his glasses. I'm trying to like do do sign do language. Sign language while it's we're not really here. working. Uh, no, but I had I had a really good day, and then you had a really good day. That was the one uh the picture we put up of the three spot target. Yeah, yeah, all three. That was actually the first three. No, that was the <clears> second <throat> round that day. Because the first round I shot was the first time I shot with just the adapter in there. Right. And that was actually two X's and a nine. And then the second round was all three X's, and it, it was nonstop. And like, either X, the, the, we had a good the outer day. ring just outside, which is still 10 points. Yeah, we had but, a good day. That's that's when I cracked mm-hmm. a knock, yeah. Yeah, you, you busted your a knock on one of your arrows. Yeah, but that's uh, that's an easy fix. That's yeah, it, easy it, it's, it's fix. not going to be bad. The, the, the shaft didn't crack or anything like that, so it's it <laughs> happened to skip right off the knock, so. Yeah, you know, which is fine. And you know what? I didn't even realize that it was cracked because it's like a um, it's the foggy, clear kind of gray knock. Yeah, it's, like a transparent um, gray. Yeah, so it's not a solid where you'd see the crack very distinctly. It has that fogginess to it, and um, it you just by glancing at it, it does not. It didn't look cracked at all. Oh yeah. So I, you know, I went to go shoot it again, and the <laughs> fucking arrow just fell off my my string. It just kind of just yeah. You tried to knock the arrow to the string, and it just doop hit the ground. I was like what the hell? Like what my arrow is falling off, and I'm like, wait, what? So I, I checked it out, and I'm like, hun, the knock is cracked. Well, I had to hold it up to the light to actually see it because I'm yeah. looking at it, and I'm like, no, it looks fine. But holding it up to the light is is when you. Catch. You really see it then, yeah. Yeah, then you actually see it, and you're like, oh, shit. Yep, yeah, exactly. Because the arrow didn't get damaged itself. The arrow's fine. Right. So that's when uh, uh, you got to be careful with that. But that's not a big thing. I mean. No, no, that's why I checked the arrow. The arrow itself is not cracked or anything like that. Um, and yeah, it didn't seem to have any issues. It Like, the knock wasn't even cracked all the way through. It was like you literally hit the tines with the other arrow, and that was it. And it just cracked at three quarters of the way instead of knock. Yeah, and, it wasn't well, a bad one. I shouldn't one. say that. People will take that as three quarters of the way plus the portion inside the arrow. It was only three quarters of the way on the portion that's outside of the arrow. Oh, yeah. So basically, it's, uh, yeah. The actual I'm portion that you slide into the arrow was actually not cracked. It was only the three quarter of the outside portion that you actually attached to the string that was actually cracked. Basically, when it's on the arrow, the only part that you can see. Mm-hmm. Three quarters of that. Yes, correct. Yeah, I just I just realized why you were re explaining that. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay. So yeah. But I mean, um so so far so good. We have the event coming up in two weeks. And we are both absolutely loving these black eagle uh, carnivores. Oh, they're great. They are fantastic for the you know, I know everyone, you know, everyone tries to we try to do everything on a budget, which was like the whole goal when we first started this. Still but when is. you order the bear shafts, still is it's a dollar more a dollar or a dollar ten more. To go from the three thousands to one thousands straightness, just 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 spend the fucking dollar. Well, okay, you have to put it in perspective. So, if you're like us and you're retarded, you're gonna buy <laughs> four dozen arrows. 
Well, that's what we did. Okay. So that's going to be a lot of money. Um, but the only reason we do that is because of the event and um, we're looking at losing some arrows and we don't want to come back with nothing or, or go out there and can't shoot two courses because we lost all of our fucking arrows. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we're just, you know, what, setting it up for, okay, this is part of our little time away because we haven't had any break since uh, we've had our son. So this no is kind vacations, of gonna be, no yeah. weekends away without children. Yeah, it's, it's been always like been with children, hours. with children and with family. Right, yeah. which is fine, but it it would also be nice to have a just us. So we're kind of setting this up so that this is gonna be this is gonna be a good outcome either way. Um, but if you're looking at only buying six or you know a half dozen or a dozen, then that that extra dollar per arrow. No, well, most extra... people are gonna go out and buy them pre-fletched and all that no, nifty no, no. shit. But, so. but my my point I'm trying to put out there right now is that right. when you're buying a smaller amount, you, the extra little bit per arrow that you can spend to get the better mm -hmm. um, straightness, I should say, or the right. the quality of it, it is not going to be um, that big of a, a wallet. It's not, yeah, it's not gonna really it's break not the gonna bank. It's not gonna break the bank that badly, right? So if you're already spending it, the extra couple dollars to add on, like right, you know, if right. you do a half dozen, that's, yeah, it might that's be like ten dollars. Yeah, you know, that, you know what? It's if you're already buying arrows, then you might as well. Yeah, because well, we've like seen other ones now that are out that are, uh, you know, they, they have the point oh threes and they have the point oh ones, and right. you literally will pay like a twenty five dollar premium to go from oh three to oh one. Wait, what? 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 Yes. For what? Arrows. For no, no shit, arrows. But I mean, what kind of? Who? I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to say who. You don't know? No, I do know. Then don't lie. I don't have to lie. Everyone I'm listening not knows. Saying. You're lying. Don't say you don't Go back lie. to old episodes. I used them. You don't. A minute. FMJs. You will literally pay like seventy bucks for the O3 straightness, and now with the new match grades, they're like a hundred bucks almost. Really? Yes. For a half dozen. For a half a dozen. Like 90, I think I seen them for $94 for match grades. And standards are going for 72. They have actually come down in price. So a $30 difference. A $22 right so. now. Like 22 bucks, $23 right now to go from the standard 003 FMJ to the 001 match grade. FMJ. That's like I've seen stores charging twenty three dollars more a half a dozen. That's like three something an arrow. Right. That's ridi that's ridiculous. No, well, but that's what I'm saying. And I love FMJs. Don't get me wrong. I will. Uh, you know, I like these Black Eagles, but you know, there's not going to be much that's going to make me stop using FMJs. There's nothing right now, in my opinion, that can beat the just the penetrating and pass through effect that those damn things will have. Well, the fact that you bought. You had now have two and a half dozen of the oh, the gonna, carnivores yeah, yeah. will stop you from using the FMJs because damn it, you're gonna go through all well, those fucking no, arrows. Well, if, <laughs> if I end up doing where I have one bow for hunting and then one bow for target, which we'll get into that in a little while, right? Because yeah. you know you gave yourself a raise. Yeah, enough. <laughs> um, then I would I'd shove the FMJs back on whatever bow I only planned on hunting with, and then use the carnivores for. A target bow. Because if I'm going to mm. shoot target, I'm going to lower the poundage to 60 pounds any damn way. You know, you're going to use a setup that um, down the line actually is uh, functional for what you're using it for. So, right. you know, black e the, the Black Eagle arrows. The are, carnivores are great. They're not going to work for everyone for everything that you're going to mm -hmm. do. That's why they, they make more than, than just one kind. Right. So you kind of just got to feel it out. You f you'll eventually figure it out. So, I mean, you know, with these... It might be nice for target shooting, but eventually when we go out hunting, whatever we hunt, it's, um, you know, a, a different kind of arrow might actually end up being better for, for us. Oh, right. Yeah. So you got to kind of feel out what's out there. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, it's all uh, testing. You're not going to get on the first shot. No. That's definitely You're not. You get it. Well, that's something, you know, I've, like I, you know, I've said before, I, I've always been like an Eastern fanboy yeah you know but right. i've always wanted to try these black eagles because there's a lot of you know people that we you know when now we've met uh the wallaces at the range they mm -hmm. they're both black eagle you um, know it's funny mm -hmm. 
Oh, wait, they actually shoot Black Eagle at the uh, events? Yes. They are sponsored by them. You know, the funny part is that growing up, because I did um, sports growing up, <clears throat> is that when you hear of Easton... Think of bats. Yeah, that's like mm -hmm. the first thing I think of is bats, yeah, yeah. no matter what. When I played baseball, my bat was an, Easton, an Easton bat. Any, anything that's not an Easton was dog shit. Like, yep. what did you get? Oh, you got that one. Must have been on sale. Yeah, yeah, well, actually, I remember, this is how fucking, since I'm 40 here, um, how it was when I, when I can honestly say when I was, like, in Little League and in high school and stuff like that. It was wood. It was, no, 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 fuck wood. <laughs> no, no, we, we were using East and Aluminum baseball bats. It was a stick. But, you know, and that's when Mizuno was first coming into the U.S., you know, the Japanese uh, baseball glove company, and they were making bats and shit, and oh, we were all like, yeah. you got one of those cheap-ass things? Look, you could yeah. ding a baseball in the fucking battle dent. You used to make fun of it, man. You know, that's how much, like, Easton went back, like, Ooh, to the shit that I used. Ooh, your parents are really poor. Yeah, yeah, your parents <laughs> bought you a Mizuno glove? Ugh. Ugh. You know? <laughs> so, so, fuck, that ain't USA, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I know. God. <laughs> so. It's like picking people in dodgeball. You, all the weaker ones are at the end. Right, right, right. You, you cuddle all the ones you know. with the other uh, And It, uh, it was so funny, gloves. too, because, I mean, I even remember, uh, we're way off the archery topic, but yeah, like, right. I remember, like, playing baseball in high school mm -hmm. and then getting... Someone gave me a, a Mizuno baseball. I think it, I'm think I'm pronouncing the company's name right. I might be pronouncing it wrong. Probably wrong. Probably. I butcher shit all the time. But I remember getting one of those gloves as like a Christmas gift. Thinking like, ugh, you know. I, 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 had, a, I had my rolling glove for like years because I played third base and whatever. I had, a, and, I had a rolling glove. Yeah, that's what everyone used. You used Easton bats and rolling baseball gloves. That was like the shit in the fucking 80s and early 90s. Yeah. You know, and I remember getting one of these Mizuno gloves. And the the first thing that probably came popped into my head, it's horrible to say it, but I, uh, the first thing I could probably think of back then was like, Jesus Christ, Japanese people's hands must be so soft. <laughs> this glove feels like fucking silk inside. <laughs> I don't even know how to spell it. I don't even know. I don't remember either. But, uh, I mean, it was. It was like, you know, when you put a rolling glove on, you could feel the nice, like, coarse leather against your hand. You could feel the glove grip to your hand. I felt like if I made the wrong, if I didn't have that hole in the glove where you stick your finger out of, if I flicked my hand, the glove would have went fucking flying. It was so smooth inside. So, you know, I was like, Jesus, what is it? They're trying to keep silky soft over there, huh? Silky soft. Yeah. I'm trying to. Oh no, this is gonna be. Uh, forget it. I was trying to. I was gonna try and look it up, but it, it, it's like jumping down another uh, rabbit, rabbit hole. hole. Yeah, of just. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like even when like when I first started shooting with the the Browning man, I was shooting Easton Double X seventy five Game Getters uh twenty one seventeen shafts, all aluminum arrows and everything like that. So that tells you how old, like the ones out now, I think are like Game Getter 4s, mm -hmm. you know, so they're like the fourth rendition or some shit like that. And I was shooting the original old school uh, first series of the Game Getters back, back forever ago. So. Yeah, um, Mizuno. M yeah. <laughs> I did say it right. Mizuno. M-I-Z-U-N-O. Yeah, yeah. Mizuno. Mm -hmm. That's them. Yeah. No, they're a bunch of. They're a bunch of frauds. They're a bunch of overpriced frauds. Yeah, now their prices have like skyrocketed. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. God. I think I still have my rolling baseball glove in one of the bins in the closet. <laughs> nah, I got rid yeah. of all my stuff. I'm not going to be playing again. Mm. It's quite all right for me. No. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, back to topic. Yes, let's go back to archery. Ah, uh, shit. Where did we leave off? Your uh, Eastern had... Arrows. Yes, while well, we were talking about the price difference of the O threes to O ones. Yeah, it, it's a little ridiculous. I don't know. Is. You gotta, uh, I you know what I suggest, just kind of feeling out everything that's out there. Right. Well, that's you what know. I'm saying. Like, I, I really can't knock them because I understand some stores. Are, like when the FMJs first came out, they were ridiculous. They were ninety dollars for a half a dozen. Right. So now the price has normalized. It's seventy two dollars, which is fine. Well, anytime anything first comes out, it's going right. to be, it's going to be overpriced because it's like the new hotness. Right. Exactly. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. Like now, you're going to have ones, uh, Easton FMJs and Easton Axes that are knock on archery edition. Right. Which, props to Dudley for getting shit made under his name, but these are going to be kits like he would use. So you're going to get the shaft, you're going to get the brass 
uh, insert that can be either 75 grain or 50 grain. Mm -hmm. um, this way you get the, the front of ma front of center weight higher, the, the FOC. Right. Um, and this way you can set your arrows up kind of like how Dudley sets his up. Where, you know, Dudley's arrows are like fucking 575 to almost 600 grains an arrow. Is it? Oh, yeah. He shoots them heavy. Yeah, he, he spoke about it during one of the podcasts. Actually, matter of fact, Magic was the one who got him to, to say what was how much his arrows weigh. Because I was watching the podcast live. Oh, okay. So. That's all you got to say about that? No, I'm trying I to thought, think of anything I else. Thought, I really oh, thought actually, you were... speaking of Magic, too. I forgot about that. No, Magic, I thought he... you were going to continue on what you were saying about the What? His the are going to go for a premium. No, I'm just, you, you just kind of like left, you just dumped it off of like. No, no, yeah, that's okay, what I'm saying. I'm he's getting them. That's what, he's <laughs> making stuff under his name. <laughs> that was such a, that was such a horrible ending to his story. Like, I thought there was more to that. No, that's about it. He's having arrows made under knock on. It's going to be his specs on, oh, for the Eastern FMJs and the Eastern uh, Axes. It's just the way you, it's the way you put okay. it. I, I thought there was more. No. I was just a little let down by that. I don't know how much the price is. They haven't released any of the info, really. Probably a lot. Pro yeah, you probably... I mean, the inserts alone are 20 bucks. So, you know, listen... And uh, they're match-grade arrows, so you're going to figure no matter who it is, $120 right off the bat? Listen, no matter who it is, if they stick someone's name on it, they're doing it as like a special edition kind of version. Right. They're always going to hike the price up. Oh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter... Who it is or a company, the reason they put someone's name on it is to, to attract certain buyers, and um, they're going to hike the price up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So be ready. If that's what you want, that's what you'll be paying for. But I'm not saying it's bad, but unfortunately, you know, Oh, yeah, uh, you're going to pay a premium. Yeah. So what, what's going on with Magic? Oh, Magic got a, a shot of turkey. So I just want to say congratulations to him because I seen him post it the other day on uh, IG. That you know, because he has like dedicated himself for like three years just to bow hunting, no guns and whatnot, and Good. finally broke the ice and got himself uh bird down. Nice. So, yeah. You know, well, I, I thought I thought he's had them before. No, no, he has. He's had no luck from what he had posted on his uh his IG story that he hasn't had any luck, and he did his whole you know rundown that he's been dedicated for the last three years and hasn't had any luck and missed a bunch, couple of opportunities and nice. This year he finally got it done. Good for you, man. If mm -hmm. you're listening, and if you're not, then I'll uh, maybe you'll you'll hear the vibes. Yeah, oh, you'll feel it. Oh, we're, oh, wait, you're okay. willing magic to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just listen to this one. Yeah, exactly. No, that's good. That's good to hear when anyone actually uh, makes a shot in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, on a side note. <clears throat> You want to speak about the monster that we've created? The monster? The monster. The Ooh. monster. The oh. monster. We're going to mention Doug again, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, people are going to start hating Doug. They don't even know Doug, except for like two episodes. Who the fuck is this Doug? Yeah, this fucking Doug guy again. Except God this goddamn it, cartoon that I remembered on Saturdays. The, oh, wow. The Nickelodeon <laughs> cartoon? <laughs> Jesus. Okay. <laughs> wow. What was the name of that anyway? I don't know. I'm older. I'm too old for that shit. You had that younger was siblings, George, though. That was George's ever. I didn't watch that shit. Doug Funny. That was his name, Doug well, Funny. Yeah, that was the, char the character's name. Yeah, I don't know. You Okay, you you lead into this, this whole conversation, because this is, uh, uh, you know, we we introduced this, and we've created, it's like... An uh, absolute monster. Frankenstein. It's alive. Well, we're, I'm going to try and... Well, we might have Doug again on here, probably, possibly next week. Man, if he can get his bandwidth in order... Fucking slow ass Whatever. shit. Whatever. We'll we'll try it another way. We try Discord. Maybe we'll try just audio only through Skype this time. Either way, we'll we'll, we'll try again. Can you get all the bitches off the in the well, house off the? The main the reason we're gonna have him on is he did another three D shoot and you know lots of progress has been made. So, but then of course after that I get the phone call of I want to build my next bow. Mm -mm. Keep in mind he's only been shooting since January. Mm hmm. And it's the questions of, if you were going to buy a bow for 3D and Target, well, what would you build? And this opens a whole freaking can of worms, you know. And it, it becomes more so, do you plan on hunting with it? No. Okay. So, there's a possibility he may just set the stinger up for 70 pounds and use that for hunting. If not, whatever. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, that's it. Was, was it just called, <laughs> just called Doug? It's just called Doug. It was called Doug. Okay, I was, I was showing a picture of it. It's just called Doug. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> you know, I get the. Uh, well, what bow would you use? Well, you know, what's the bow? Because he knows I, I'm planning to have a bow for hunting and 3D, and then I want to have one that can do 3D into target style shooting. And I, I told him, you know, the ideal setup for me, what my opinion was, I was really contemplating the Supra from PSE, just mm. because it's 38 inches or some, 39 inches, something like that. And, you know, long axle to axle, it's got a, a very good uh, forgiveness. I think it's a seven or a seven and a half inch brace height. It's not extremely fast. It's like 328 feet per second or 325 feet per second or something like that. But it's notoriously known as a bow that's very forgiving for shooting. And, you know, and then, okay, what else? I'm like, dude, if you're going to, you got to understand that you're going to drop two G's into this bow. Yeah, it, you know, once you start getting into target, right? And we've mentioned this before that if you start steering, okay, so shooting a bow period, um, anyone who shoots out there already, hunting or target, you already know that there's a um a nice little price tag that follows. That's right. that's the whole point of us trying to budget things out and then share, you know, where we found things and and what works, what doesn't work, and uh. But well, once you start diving, once you dive into farther hunting, it comes with price tags, like with all the gear and everything else like that. And then the target side of it, you get into different price tags. It makes hunting look cheap. Well, um, it does. No, I, I mean no. No, okay, <clears throat> it's expensive. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it's not as equally spread out. So hunting, it's you have it going toward. Your bow and your gear and everything else you need right. on the hunt, but no, the I'm target talking just bow in general. Yeah, the target it's just the bow. Like all the money's in the bow. It's not no, yeah, spread yeah. out. It's so not. you're still spending the money, but well, your bow and your arrows. Not... I mean, because if you get some of these crazy, like Easton, for example, is that there's some arrows that are four hundred dollars a dozen. What? Yeah, I think they're called like P10s or something like that. Wait, the uh, the target big... arrows. They're actually specifically made for target shooting only. The sharper marky, the the sharp. Yeah, the big fat ass pencil, markers? gigantic sharper number marky? two pencils. <laughs> the mar I can't even you know, talk. It's a pencil the, the size of the thickness marky. of our son's fucking arm. Uh, it just punch yeah. like Hulk through the. Yeah. the uh, was it the number ten? Well, it was the number ten, the number nine, and half the fucking eight. Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> yeah, four hundred dollars. Like four hundred bucks a, a a dozen for bear shafts. Mm -mm. Mm hmm. So. I don't think so. They need like a GPS going toward the target on that. <laughs> Look at the Garmin side, a thousand dollars, self aiming. No, fuck that. Oh yeah, the Supra. Just uh, just to let you know the Supra EXT. That's the one I was telling Doug. Um, axle axles, thirty seven inches. Okay, so it's thirty seven. Yeah, it's thirty seven inches. Okay, maybe it was the Beast that I was thinking of. That's thirty eight or thirty nine. But, but the beast is also made for a long draw. I think the minimum draw on the beast was twenty eight, which the, the beast is no longer actually listed on PSE's website. That I've seen at least. No, it's not. I'm actually on their website right now. They they do not have it at all. Okay. Um, but but like it's still a thousand dollars for a super, isn't it? Um, they do not list the price because it is not sold online. You have to go to a dealer. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's a pro shop only bow. Yes. Yeah, they mm -hmm. won't they won't sell it online. Right. And so, all right. So the super is thirty seven. That means the phenom was a thirty six, and then your bow comes in at thirty five. Well, obviously. Right. So, but he's looking into the longest he can get without going crazy into the, the into the like the shoot downs and whatever. I believe which are like forty inches the target bows. Well, see, here's a problem, though. Mm -hmm. it, because of his height. He's a tall dude. He's six foot one and change. Yeah. So the taller you are, obviously, you're going to need a longer bow to actually have a bow that's considered long. Right. Because, I mean, if you look at it prospectively, it's um, me with mine. Uh, it, it feels like it's, it's huge. Well, you're five foot two with a thirty five inch bow. Exactly, but then you add, you know, a foot of person to that. And right, it's, it's mm -hmm. not exactly that big anymore. It kind of, you know, it becomes like a uh, a normal size. Right. So, oh, the and the phenom is thirty six. Well, no, no, thirty five and a half. Thirty five and a half now. It used to be thirty six. Mm hmm. 
So it, it, it's all in perspective. Unfortunately, since he's so tall, him finding a bow that's not considered a, just the target bow that's going to have the link right. is going to be a, uh, an, interesting, an interesting feat. So what else was he looking at? What do you mean? What else? Was he you, you can't. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just. I'm trying to see because even their target bow, the non shoot through riser one, is 37, mm -hmm. which is the shoot down. Um. Oh wait. Oh no. The phenom and all that are listed on the same thing. So, but, and he asked me to be you know, basically it was you know which one would you go with? And the one I was been I've been looking at was the Supra because it still has a decent you know uh, let off. It's it's 75 percent and whatnot. Right. And. uh I was like, dude, you know, I told him, I was like, you're looking at spending two G's because this can get expensive. I'm like, you're not talking a, you know, your, like, your, he, or, he asked me, what stabilizer would you, what space stabilizers would you recommend? A ladder. A ladder? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I told him, as of right now, from the stuff we've used, you know, I, since we've had True Glows and all this other shit, I, everything we have right now, I would say... I'm not switching stabilizers. No, I'm just no, putting no, that no, out right there. Just, just no, I'm just saying, like, right. that company. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. Like, everything we've used up to date for hunting-wise, I'd say was fine. True mm -hmm. Glow is good for hunting. Trophy uh, Ridge, uh, the static, is good for hunting. That's fine. Wick stick. Your wick stick is ridiculous. And that's what I told him. I was like, for a carbon fiber, you know... I mean, I was expecting it to flex. That I could bludgeon someone to death with that fucking thing. It's so stiff. So, and that's why I told him. I was like, "But you're not talking a sixty-seven dollar twelve-inch stabilizer. Right? You're talking a hundred and forty dollar thirty-inch fucking stabilizer because you're a guy. Yep. You know. And then you got to put some weights out on front, which you know normally when you do a thirty-inch stabilizer, there's only four five ounces out front. The majority of your weight comes on the back side to balance the bow out. And I told you, then you're going to have to get a 10 or 12 inch back bar. Mm -hmm. So now you got another fucking $70 in the rear end, and then you're going to need more fucking weights on top of that. Oh, shit. I'm like, yeah, so you yeah, got, oh, shit. You got $300, $400 in the fucking stabilizers, $1,000 in the fucking bow. You don't even have a sight yet. You know, uh oh, what arrow rest would you use? Uh, fuck, I'd go with the AAE uh, Pro Drop, Blade Pro Drop, something. It's the one everybody fucking uses right now. Just because. Well, the, the standard whale tail version of the pro drop that everyone uses for hunting is the shit as it is. Right. It's basically the same thing as the Dud as Dudley's Elevate. Okay. Except it doesn't come with the blades, whereas Dudley's Elevate is both blade kit and whale tail kit. So it, it's like okay, you, you, so now you're a hundred and fifty, depending if if you want the whale tail kit. But if he decides to go this route, he's going right. to have to decide, am I going to shoot freestyle, which allows you to shoot with a whale tail hunting setup, or do I want to go full-blown target style, which then you have to shoot, you have no choice but to shoot with a blade style arrow rest, and, you know, huge fucking stabilizers and all this other shit, you know, so now you're $1,400 into the bow with bow and stabilizers, <laughs> another 150 to 200 from the arrow rest, mm -hmm. so now you're at 1600 you haven't got a fucking sight yet, <laughs> you know. The carriages for these some of these sites from CBE, <coughs> Sherlock, like the good big companies. Right. I, I, I don't know how the AA, HHA tournament edition of the Kingpin would work. I know it's dovetailed, so it might do really well. I, I think the Sherlocks and the CBE, yes, yeah, CBE, their site setup where it's a straight vertical numbers instead of a dial. Right. I think that style setup works so much better for target shooting. It's not like flicking on the fucking fly while you're in hunting. You could just spin the dial and fucking peg a deer. Right. You know, it's more concise. You got time. You got two minutes to let an arrow out so you can do your fine adjustments and all that stupid shit. You know, no scope, 300 fucking dollars. And then you got to go with a, so a scope. Oh, there's another 150. Oh, I want to fucking magnify it. Oh, fuck. There goes another $100. Oh, fuck. And now I need a specialty archery peep sight and a clarifier. There's another 55 in the hole. You know, still don't have fucking arrows yet. Yeah, I know. Let's get some Easton P10s. $400 a dozen with no fucking veins. You're fucked. You know. No, it can't be that much. I'm telling you. Dude, some of oh, these arrows I'm... are fantastic. And that's why I understand now why guys like... Dan McCarthy, he's also very, very like involved with the uh, design stuff for Black Eagle. 
He shoots carnivores at competitions. He has shot zombie killers at competitions. And, you know, some of these guys now are pushing the fact that you don't need the crazy, stupid, high-end arrows. These carbon arrows that a lot of people are hunting with will do just fine. You know, so it just depends on how you set them up. A lot of FOC. Got to get the arrows fucked up, as as I heard on the Kafaru <laughs> podcast. Which, what? Yeah, FOC, fuck, fuck, fuck. I, no, I got yeah. that, but I don't, I don't <laughs> the, know the... Aaron kept calling it, you know, you got to fuck up your fucking arrows. <laughs> you got to front of center the arrows. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I just had me dying laughing. Um, oh, they don't have prices. Oh, no, you're not going to find them on the Instagram oh, page. Oh, no, you have to go to a dealer. All right. God damn it. No, I, I honestly thought that you'd be able to, um, they, they'd have like price tags all over right, them. Right, right, right. But they do not share that. Right. I, I am not part of the group that is allowed to. No, nice, to nice, that. nice. Yeah, you, you don't have dealer privileges? No. Damn you. Uh, I'm not in this circle of trust. Right, exactly. Anyway. So, but I mean, by the time you're done, you're, you could be 2,500 in the hole. But you know what? You can always go on eBay. You can always kind of scout around for stuff, and you can look go, look for a. No, no, this is all. He even asked me brand new prices. He literally put in the text N I B new inbox. Or no, he put new, or he just spelled it and it came up N I B. I don't know. Or it could have been never inbox. Yeah, who knows? Not inbox. Well, it's like I even I found um, a listing today for two Supras. Mm-hmm. One was the brand newer version, the EXT. And one was the older version, the the Supra Max. And it was actually, um, what the hell's his name? He, he has a YouTube channel that I've watched. Oh, Dalton Vaughn. He had two of them for sale. Mm. And a, 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 a Carbon 34. And he had a couple of PSE bows for sale. It was nice. Good prices, too. And I think the Supra Max he was selling for like 310 shipped. Were they just older models? Uh, I think the Supra Max was like a 15 or 16. And the Super EXT was a 17. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, uh, oh, she's there. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. I don't know. My brain's kid like. kid life. But yeah, I know, right? That mommy life. I'm tired. It's 1030. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's more like, oh, it's nine o'clock. Oh, my God. It's time for bed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> as soon as the kids hit the, the pillow mm-hmm. and all you parents out there are like, oh, I'm going to stay up for a little bit. And five minutes later, you're like, oh, fuck this. Fucking falling <laughs> asleep on the couch. Phone hits you in the face. I'm going to sleep. No, but I mean, you know, a lot of bows. It's um, the minute. It's like January 1st. Happy New Year. Okay. All those bows from yesterday are no longer the. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, it's because bows go by car year model. It go, go I know. I just, years. you know, I think it's funny. It, it, that's the way the world works, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. But, you know. That's what I did with the. the, the just because something the is. Inertia. The inertia was a 16. I bought it in 17. It was 400 instead of 700. Yeah. Just because they have a new model out yeah. and people are going for that one. Showed up at the house so, in the box. Yeah. You know, it, just because something is, is a year or two, whatever, older, doesn't mean that it's any less capable of doing mm-hmm. anything. Absolutely. You know, it's just whoever used it, just they're moving on. And, you know, if that's something you're going into, then it, you can start off with that. You don't have to pay full price for everything. Right. You know, I can't, I can't stress that enough. I know a lot of people think they have to buy brand new everything. But it, you don't have to buy brand new everything. Even if you have money to throw around, don't buy brand new everything. You know, you kind of want to feel around. I mean, once you know your specifics of what you want, right. then shoot for brand new everything. Because then you are you know, okay, only I use this. And okay, shit, this is what I broke on this. And like, you know, the little twerks, like the twerks. Tweaks. Tweaks and, right. you know, the, twerking? the little the twerks. You're twerking it out, huh? The, uh, what's the, what was the word I was looking for? little quirks okay yeah that's the word i think i don't know fuck it so you know it's a uh, it's the ins and outs it's like a car you, you buy it brand new and then uh after owning pieces of shit for how long then you finally know oh, okay and then you know that car it's uh everything that goes wrong on it you're the only one that's used it so you're like oh okay it's because i didn't do this or i didn't do that right it's like anything mm-hmm. so but still, I think finding everything on eBay and late or like earlier models and and whatnot is still going to cost you. Oh yeah, you're yeah. still you're still getting in the hole. But unless you have, I know they do um, hunter class. 
target. Right. That's what he does. Right. Well, right. I think in his where he shoots, it's called freestyle. Freestyle. It's just because of the fact that he shoots a hunting setup. He shoots a tw- you know, a, what's he shooting right now? Nine inch stabilizer, and he's shooting a whale. Uh, well, fork style IRS because he's okay. now on the QAD Hunter. Okay. So he's in. He doesn't. He's not shooting a blade setup. He's not shooting a huge stabilizer and stuff like that. So right now he's technically shooting freestyle class, which is hunter. So same shit. Yeah, but you can still go into um, bigger competitions with that. With that setup? No, he cannot join the actual target side. No, 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 no. What I'm, what I'm sh- going for is when they they do these um, the bigger target events. Right. Don't they have the um, the different classes set up so that okay, so if you fall into this one, you can like this is where you're shooting. Like there's different. Um... That's what he. That's what I'm saying. He doesn't shoot with. The guys that are specifically have target bows. He shoots with guys that are all set up for hunting. So and whatnot. he wants to actually go in that crowd. Yes, he. Um, Doug wants to jump fucking head first into the pool of the guys who are like ninjas with fucking bows. Oh yeah, no, his wallet's not gonna make it. Well, if his wallet's not gonna make it, then <laughs> as much as Don is gonna be like, you want to spend what? Uh, You're not allowed to talk to Anthony no more. <laughs> My goddamn redneck friends. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And now no, Brody it's... has two bows. <laughs> the, the son now has two bows. <laughs> I don't know what we did. Hey, whatever. Uh, it's okay, though. Damn. All right. Yeah. No. So we'll, uh, I guess we'll keep updated on that. Yeah. Like I said, I'll probably have Doug on next week because he wants me to make like a whole like wish list. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Look at Santa Claus over here. That's why I'm like, oh, all right, I'll, I'll see what I could find, you know? And then, uh, I'll see what I can find, like, the retail price of new, and then see what I can find for used. You know, and then he's also asking me about the uh, the trigger releases, because he you know, sees, a, you know, a lot of people using four fingers and three fingers like we do. Uh, but you know what? <clears throat> that doesn't necessarily mean, because a lot of people are using it, that's going to work for you. Because I just recently <clears throat> switched my releases out. Yes, you actually are back on the True Glow Detonator. Yeah. And it's honestly, it, I'm starting to find out that it doesn't mean that you're going backwards on anything. No. It just sets you up differently. It's comfort. Yeah. And on, not even comfort, because I was technically comfortable with, with all of them. Mm-hmm. I've never felt awkward. No. I've only felt awkward with one. Yeah, the, 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 the BT gold, <laughs> which you almost threw through the bow. Oh, fucking Christ. That one as you were just... pulling through, click. Fuck, I'm not even all the way back yet. Oh, God. Could you imagine with the Evolve now? No. With that let off? I can't, like, I wouldn't I wouldn't know if it was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd have to put it to 80% just oh, to give you more Jesus. tension. Yeah, no. Um, I don't know. It, you know, I think it just depends on what you're shooting with and then how your positioning is and then how it, it creates... It, it kind you, of... I, I will say you clearly do better with <laughs> the... The the wrist rocket compared to the forefinger with this bow. Yes. Like clearly, and it just may be the fact that you know shorter axle to axle for the stinger compared to the thirty five on the evolve and you just position arm position. Yeah, yeah. That's all. You're you know with the detonator, I was able to put it at its shortest length on the neck, get your arm and your, your elbow back up high again, and stuff like that, and it puts you back to where you're supposed to be, and. You know, this last two weeks, you could just see the comfort settling and settling. And then this yeah. fucking Friday, you were just murdering the shit out of the, the, the circle. It was great. I kept expecting it to just wither away. Like, you, when you have, like, a couple of good shots, and you're like, ah, this won't last. It, it was just a... It was all that entire hour. You just butchered the and shit you know, out of the whole. The funny part is, is that my endurance level was just... Uh, like, I was not getting tired. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and and recently I started um, trying to run longer again, so right. that, could be, that, that could also be that could also be helping out a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you need to. Well, it's a little too late now for that uh, the event in two weeks. But oh, I know. Um, I notice, yeah, the when I start just running more, mm-hmm. then uh, it, it goes up again. Right. So. Or the fact that my neck was so stiff that I couldn't really wander around too much. You so couldn't move. You're like, I don't really know. I got a stiff neck and I'm shooting better. Yeah, I know. Now that my neck is feeling better, I might be screwed. Oh, 
we'll find out on uh, was it Tuesday when we go? Yeah, Tuesday, and we're gonna look into the uh, uh, chronographing the bows. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we we looked I, on Friday, and they, they of, have a set price of of what it is. So yeah, I yeah. think they, it's just pretty much set up that you can go. You say, hey, I want to chronograph the bows. And right. Well, I, I'm chronograph, chronographed. Chronograph. Is there? I think it's Accentuation on the O O I. Yeah, it's chrono. Chrono. Yeah. Okay, anyway. So, um, I don't know. See, like, mine I have to see because it's bad enough how fast the inertia is to well, begin with. Are you afraid with. My, mine might show faster? Fuck no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Get out. Okay, what if Absolutely I upped my poundage? Absolutely not. You, you could only go to 60. So? My bow's IBO is faster than your bow's to begin with. Well, what are you pulling with now? 70. No, you're not. It's it's well. I think the last time when James checked it after he put the new string on it, it was at seventy four and change. Bullshit. I call bullshit. You know we're gonna call. We're gonna find this one out on Tuesday. What? Well, you want to see how heavy one is? Yeah. Okay. Because I call bullshit. I'm telling you, it's over seventy pounds. Yeah. Okay. It's well. Uh, it's over seventy. Okay. I know you know is. what? The minute that they tell me that's what it's pulling, mm-hmm. then I'll believe it. Okay. I th- I'm pretty sure it's over 70 because it's heavier okay, than the bear. Okay, now we're going to pretty sure. No, because the bear was set was hitting 70.1, and this thing is harder to pull than the bear was. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So, I don't know. I, I just want to see how fast it goes as it is, so. Anyway. We'll see what happens. I don't know. If mine, if mine's faster, you know there's going to be an excuse. Your bow's of, not going well, to be faster. You know. I could low. You could well. max yours at sixty, and max. Well, you'd have to if you go to sixty on yours. Well, your arrows are also much lighter than mine. There it is. So, there it is. <laughs> serious, there it it's is. true. Uh, there was the. You, you well, you know. You, 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 you well, should, uh, Jesus Christ! Stop yelling. <laughs> I'm not yelling. You I'm are just too. Close. Like I'm closer. That's begging why. the fucking mic out here. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. Um, no. I mean, there it uh, is. It depends. No, plus, no, plus your, your draw length is shorter than mine, so the arrow's on the string shorter to begin with. Here it goes. It's piling up. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Everyone listening is like, yeah, he's right. You know, 29-inch draw length, his arrows should be faster. All the reasons why. No, nah, no, nah, mine, 100% of the time, mine's faster than Listen, I don't own a fucking Honda, so I'm not trying to make that rice. Uh, the, I'll race you my the lawnmower. The ricer that lost the fucking race, be like, bro, my timing's off. Yeah, okay. I'll race you my lawnmower with And yes, Honda. I can say that shit from experience, because I've heard that a thousand times after my old car whooped the fuck out of people. Yeah, that's right. Let's not get into that topic. So, <clears throat> we're going to um, check all that on Tuesday, because mm-hmm. we got to do our sight tape. Mm-hmm. And oh, and the pressure is going to be on Uno for that one, boy. Right. Yeah, that gonna, it? yes, Uno. yes, Uno. Because it was uh, when you're looking it up, not to right. put just Uno in, because you'll just see the game, right? And all the millions and millions of versions of it and right. makers mm-hmm. of it. Um, no, but I, I still got to hear back or get in contact with that range out there. I haven't, unless they emailed me and it went right into your, spam. your spam folder. Which your email account seems to do that a lot. No. No? I thought it does. No, because the one person that sends me stuff that I don't get the emails from, right. it goes nowhere. Oh. Like, my email completely blocks it. It's like, no, 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 no. So, um, no, I I, uh, I got to call them, find out, because we got to... Um, see that range so we can get everything sighted in hopefully beforehand right and not the just day, to make sure it's and right. not the day of yeah i kind of don't want to lose that many arrows yeah that would suck because of you know my sight taping off mm-hmm. so but then there was another one that you found oh no that was going towards charlotte that's like the other way right mm-hmm. so we found we found one or two or you found one or two i found two that are specifically listed in south carolina for outdoor 3D ranges. Yeah, so one of them is actually toward Myrtle Beach. One of them is in Myrtle Beach. Okay. Sand Dune. So is that, that one, it was the $35 for the family for, yes, a, for year, a year. Mm-hmm. Which is really good. So that's something that probably in the near future we'll be going to. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. So, because I have family that lives out there. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we might want to do that before, get the membership done before Memorial Day, because you know we're going to go visit your mother uh, and the family for Memorial Day weekend. 
So we might well, actually be going there Memorial Day weekend because it's actually in a, like a state park. So you're paying your membership as part of like your duty fee even for open the that land. Fee. It's apparently there is dust till dawn every day. Yeah, but you have to look at holidays. Sometimes holidays are different. It doesn't show any. I looked at a schedule. It shows no close dates. Well, besides next weekend, Memorial weekend is that weekend. The, the only other weekend. Because we about? have next weekend, then the shoot, and then okay. Memorial weekend. Memorial weekend's three weeks away. Yeah. Okay. No, no more than that. No, it's not. But whatever. We're like right there, bud. All right. So, we're right there. Oh, yeah. Because well, yeah, we go the night. Yeah. So the weekend after, we're going to your mom's house anyway. So, yeah, so I'll probably put something up from that. Mm-hmm. Those will be road clips too. Not so much a uh, sit down. Yeah, yeah. Sit that down whole talk. weekend will probably just be road clip wise or whatever we come up with. Yeah. Okay. So um, one coming up is going going to be diving into the target archery bows. And then we'll pick at Doug's brain of how much. Or how much he wants to go into stuff. And also, actually, his drastic improvement at his 3D shoots. Yeah, so we'll see what happens with that. And we'll see if we can get that straightened out. Um, especially with the the connection. Because I think the last time, the connection was just horrible. Yeah, it kept yeah. lagging on his yeah. side. Um, now, I know that you're like, yeah, I really don't want to mention this. But let's just bring it up. So what you heard from one of the other podcasts. Oh, God, you're going to make me go into this. <laughs> Fuck, man. You mention it. What? You know, you bring it up, and you're like, eh, I don't really want to talk about yeah, it, but, you know, just, you think I'm not going to say the, something? You, you think? No, I know, I know, I know. I should know better. Fuck. Yeah, you should just keep your mouth shut. Yeah, I know. I know. God damn it. All right, basically, one there was another science podcast. I listen, I listen to a lot of, like, nerdy shit, too, so I listen to a lot of science stuff, a lot of movie stuff, whatever. And uh, I, have, I have a fascination with science. And... Basically, there's like a whole like movement of trying to no longer separate the ability of a guy from the ability of a woman. And one of the like the big things that they were pushing for is equality in sports. Now, which is it, impossible. I'd like to put that out there. It's impossible that's from for a woman's view. Ha-ha. For yeah, it's it's impossible. It's 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 imp- clearly. I mean, as far as structure and um, well, our bones are more dense. Our muscles are bigger, biological. Blah, blah, blah. Is biological the correct word? Yes, biologically. Biologically impossible for a man and a woman to be physically equal. Right. Just saying. Okay. Continue. Well, the <laughs> idea is that they're they're trying to attribute sports in certain ways that, in theory, they are trying to prove that women can be equal to guys. Now, there are a lot of things that prove that a woman's twitch reaction is better than a man's. In a lot of ways, it's so smoother. Like ping pong. No, 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 no. Like shooting wise, I mean, like guns and stuff like that. <laughs> no, I'm just talking, talking about just, sports in general, like ping pong. Like, you get well, the, you the guys twitch just, of the. Uh, oh, I know. Paddle. It's you had a paddle. <laughs> um, but you guys, your 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 reaction is like smoother. Where guys seem to be much more harsh. Like you tell a dude to squeeze a trigger, somehow he's still going to yank it. Whereas so then, a woman will apply just enough pressure and squeeze the trigger. It, oh, okay. So I mean, wait, that's that's uh, when I I pull the trigger. No, that's when because you run out of bullets. You're like, what the fuck's wrong with the gun? Why is it not firing anymore? Mm-hmm. You know, like you did with the AR-15 down in Florida. Um, but uh, you know, and I could see the point of you know you're trying to equal everything down. I'm fine with all that stupid shit. I'm not. Whatever. <laughs> no, no. I'm a. I'm fine with the fact that people are trying it too. I'm not going to argue with someone trying to be equal. That's fine. You know, fucking people want to try and be equal. That means you're a fucking doer. So good. Mm-hmm. You're not that slouch motherfucker sitting on a chair saying, I should be equal. Fuck you. Okay. So people are still trying. So that's donker. cool. If you're a fucking doer, do it. Try to be my fucking equal mm-hmm. or try to be someone else's fucking equal. Do that shit. Just get the fuck up and do it. My problem is, is when people say it should be, you know, I understand, and of course, archery comes into this because archery is a skilled shooting thing. It has to do with form. It has to do with posture. It has to do with strength. It has to do with like all that shit and combined. Right. And it's become the well. If you take archery, why are women separated from the men? Women can shoot just as good as men. Yes, there are a lot of women that are fucking badass at shooting. Right. They really are. You know, Sharon Wallace is fantastic shooter. Emily McCarthy, fucking awesome shooter. 
horrible if you happen to listen to this, Kara. I don't remember your last name, but she's also from Team Matthews because Matthews just happens to run the women's fucking division. That's all I see lately is Team Matthews. Matthews is, well, I mean, look at the last competition. They took eight out of 12 podium positions. Listen, PSC needs to come back around. Right now, PSC's got, not to shun them, they have two guys that everyone talks about. One is Jack, and the other one is Stefan Hansen. Any females? Not that come to mind. Ooh, no. I could take that spot. If you get good enough, yes, it's fine. Hey, hey, hey. No, 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 no. And, and oh, let's get back to the topic here. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. And it was the, it came down to, well, if you, if you put women against men, they can shoot just as good. Right. Now, if you look, and not to be a dick, but if you look at a lot of the recent scores between the IBO and the ASA of events and whatnot, and that's all the numbers I'm using. So I'm using numbers, not fucking some bullshit. You see numbers like like Levi and Dan McCarthy. Right. Like superior fucking dudes in the division. Mm-hmm. Jack. Guys that are shooting 26 up, 24 up, 25 up, whatever. You know, and for anyone who doesn't understand score up, every target, it, think of it like golf. If you shoot a 10, you're on par. Anything below it, you're under. Um, and then there's also 12 rings and 14 ring, which, but you have to call your upper 12, lower 12, or your 14 ring. Kind of pull. Like yeah, exactly. Pool. Um, you got to call your shot. So, and then, you know, a lot of times guys are calling upper 12, lower 12s, and that's how they get their score up. So when guys are finishing 26 up on 40 targets, they shot multiple 12s or 14 along the path on targets. Your whole goal in reality is to hit a 10 on every single target. So this way, par would be 400 on 40 targets. So that's your minimum right. to shoot for. Right. Well, that's, <laughs> that's the goal. Yeah. Shoot for. So, and, and you see, like I said, like these guys are shooting 20-something, 30 in some cases up. Mm-hmm. And not to knock the women, because like I said, they are all, all, all badass. But you're seeing things like 10 up and 12 up. The guys are two and a half times higher, you know, and I'm talking like not amateur versus pro. I'm talking pro women versus pro guys. So if you look at a bunch of the last ASA competitions, there wouldn't be a woman that would make the shootout. Horribly to say that, but it's the truth. Right. You know, they usually put five or six people in the shootout, usually five. The, the top five, the, there wouldn't be a woman that would have gotten close because the top five dudes were 20 fucking something points up. Well, so the, Whereas the, one, the top woman was 12 up, 10 up. The thing is, is because <clears throat> a male physique and how it's made, put together and a woman's oh, man, physique. Oh, put together? They're put together. Re- no, I just shut Genesis? up. Genesis? <laughs> Genesis. <laughs> we got Jesus. some clay and ribs in that shit now. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> So, uh, you know, how they're, they're built, comparison, it's on two different levels. And that's because the, the body functions for each one is for two different purposes. Right. That, that's how we were, we were made. You know, I'm sorry for all you fucking people who think they're, you know, it's, uh, that's not true. But, you know, that is true. It's, uh, that's more on a science level. Right. Um, and unfortunately, you know, it, it doesn't mean that a a woman can't work to the point of getting to that skill level where they can compete right but majority speaking it's you know unfortunately you're you're not going to be able to um naturally keep up with a, a male doing the same thing mm-hmm. you know you put them at because we were talking about this you know before we started recording so if you put them at the same like if they have the same draw length the same same exact bow set up. Um, you know, find pulling. some fucking Amazon to shoot against Levi? Yeah, Jesus Christ. I'm just saying, like, same height, same... I mean, everything to a T. Let's just... Let's hypothetically say. Right. And they're pulling the same poundage. Uh, a, a male is going to be able... This is your, your whole point. Be able to... Uh, if they're pulling the same weight... Yeah, well, our dexterity is different. longer at that poundage because of the, the natural strength that comes with them. Mm-hmm. In comparison to the woman who's had to really work for it. Right. So, you know, it, it's, uh, I, I don't, like you know. I'd love I for you to see, see you pull back my inertia <laughs> without trying to fold your fucking elbow in the front. Mm, yeah, no, it's not going to. You know, I, I tried pulling your browning 
But I remember pulling, trying to pull your brownie well, back. Well, the brownie's at 78. He, no, that was like hitting a brick wall. That was disgusting. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. No, this is like, it, it took your, um, all of your willingness to try and, and all of your, uh, oh, God, Watching I can't veins even and foreheads and shit popping out like, mm. nope. Yeah, no, it, it just, uh, it took my soul and just kicked it. <laughs> It, it really did. It, it, fucking, <laughs> fucking horrible. <laughs> Kicked my soul. Yeah. That's a good one. So, you know, it, it's, uh, but it's unfortunate that, you know, it, the men are the men and the women are the women. And, you know, it just, just deal with it. I don't, unless you are every year in every competition that you compete in, like, let's say for women, if you happen to be, First in every event and first in every competition and first in this, first in that, and you have no one beating you and you turn around and say, yeah, but there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to compete. Hold on. There's no reason why I shouldn't be able to keep compete against men. Mm -hmm. Then maybe I'd be like, okay, right. yeah, I get it. But you know what? There isn't, there, there isn't one out there like that. There is right. not. They, they might say, oh, we're entitled to. You know what? Then they should let those go into the men's division and everything. All the rules are the same. They don't get any like uh, handicaps or any of that bullshit and see how that, that turns out and see how quickly they turn around and say, yeah, maybe I might, you know, stay in the women's right. division. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Like this, like this type of whole conversation scenario has already popped up before in other sports. It, it popped up once in tennis, I believe. I, I believe actually McEnroe who is one of the most notorious tennis players of all time that screamed at referees through a fucking racket at one's face and all sort of shit. I don't know anything about tennis. Well, you know who Serena Williams is, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, it came up that he made a remark of, because of, I don't know if they were talking about this whole equal sex opportunity thing, but I know it just came up in conversation where he said, well, if Serena was playing against fucking men, she'd be ranked 200th. Right. And literally, if you check the statistics, it was, he was fucking dead on nuts. Like, she played... Uh, a what the fuck's it called scrimmage okay against like the 200 and something ranked dude right. and he fucking wrecked her because they're on two uh, different levels she's in the top of her category yeah but i'll give it to her that she even wanted to to go against the guy fine right. that's cool that's what i mean if you're a doer you're a fucking doer try it yeah do it that's fine all props to you for trying you know but you know she said all right well i tried now I'm just going to go back here and I'm going to fuck every woman up I know in this division because she can because she's a she is an elite tennis player for women. Right. She and absolutely is. is. She is a fucking absolute beast of, of a tennis player. I think what people are losing. And I don't know shit about tennis, but you watch her swing a fucking racket. You're like, oh, the ball's going to break. Yeah. They, you know, they're uh, I would be uh, ducking and run, running yeah, from those fucking things. Fucking that bitch hits some like forearm shit. And you just like, poof, you hear the racket hit the fucking ball. Yeah. You know, I, I think what people are missing by all this, by thinking they're entitled to be just naturally equal when they're not, is, um, I mean, if you're in a certain group, then be elite in that group. Right. You know, don't it, try to, to go every here and there and here. No, if you're if you're in the group and you want to be sorry, if you want to be the the best and you want to be you want to prove something. Right. Then then prove that you're the best in that group. And then when you you keep doing that and then you're like, no, oh, you know, I'm I've been like the best for a consecutive whatever events. Right. You know, I think I need to challenge myself. Then, you know, then push the issue that right. you should be able to compete with against men because that is you know that is a higher level right and that's that's like my point too is like you know and it's i'm glad there's a lot of things now especially like uh greg Poole from bow junkie mm -hmm. he when the women come up to play he really like showcases the shit out of them right all the time you know sharon wins um emily mccarthy wins kara wins Right away, interviews them, puts him in the spotlight, you know. And I think a lot of the things, like a person like that, like he's done mm -hmm. trying to get their side of the sport out there, has caused their paychecks to start to raise. Like if, if you look at five years ago, someone like you know Dan or Levi, they won a competition. Their check was fifteen thousand dollars for winning it. 
right? right? Not including what they got outside of the actual event. Well, a lot of times, like the event check was only like twenty five hundred. Their sponsor check was fifteen thousand right. from one from Matthews, let's say, yeah. and then fucking one from Excel or one from Sherlock and one from this and one from that. Whatever. Yeah, you get checks from every fucking sponsor. You know, and the woman at the time, their check was like five grand. Now you're watching their checks go ten thousand because the viewership of the women's side of the division right. is not only just growing interest in the men's uh, guys watching it because i watch them all the fucking time every time greg puts something up on his youtube channel i watch them all you you watch all the women oh yeah i like dude i, I get a kick i like I, women yeah, but <laughs> just... obviously i married one um no no i really do i you know and mm-hmm. when you watch it you watch in my opinion over and over you watch the big three of the women go at it and it's cara emily and sharon you know, it, it's... They are um, like the queen three that... There's five people in a shootout. Guess what three are in the shootout? Again. It's know, like it's, no fucking shock when the three of them make it because they are the elite of the women. One thing that I've, I've noticed since we started this is... Um, uh, I don't want to call myself naive, okay. but... Um, but or you, were maybe the newcomer. Living you were the main listen, reason we started this. You were the newcomer to archery. You know, I was, the whole thing new to me was watching these events happen. I just like well, shooting and going like, hunting. It was more like, yeah, fuck it. Let's just have a, do a podcast. Yeah, we're doing yeah, it was something, it was an activity for a husband and wife. Why not? No, uh, you know, I, I've been hearing all this stuff like, ah, oh, you know, it's, it's nice to hear uh, uh, a woman's side of things and uh, a woman that does this and that. And I'm thinking like, okay, there's, there's other, plenty of other women that, that shoot. I don't understand what the big deal is. And I'm starting to, like, I hear it a lot, and I don't know if it's just that I don't, um, I don't, it's not that I don't believe it, it's just I don't, I don't think it's that big of a deal, maybe, uh, that yeah, I, you, I follow a lot of, but the thing is here, I follow, in my eyes, I see plenty of women that hunt, that shoot, you know, for Target, for, I feel like there's a lot out there, but then when I hear outside point of views, I, it seems like there's yeah, but, not. But that's a difference of being involved in the community and not being involved. If an outsider looks in and says, oh, why are the women getting paid less than men? That's the first thing they're going to fucking see. Oh, please. It's, it's all like, about the money. No, 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 no. Yeah, all right, fine. Yes, yes. That part, yes. But that's what they see as an outsider. Once you get into archery and then you find out that a lot of, if you look at any fucking sport, the women's soccer players make less than men. Why? Their viewership is one third that of guys. Yeah. You know, and well, viewership stats prove it. Fucking numbers don't goddamn lie. You know, so, and it, it, it's just people don't want to hear anything about numbers. They just hear this person makes more than that person. Now, as you're seeing it in just our community of archery, you're watching the viewership on the women's side of the sport go right. up. You're finding a lot more women right now buying bows who's gonna buy a fucking stinger or who's gonna buy a diamond or who's gonna buy this bow who's buying a hoyt who's buying a fucking math right well archery is coming back around and here's the thing is that i think it's coming back around because of good and negative publicity i think the positive side of things here hear me out okay so the positive side of thing is is obviously it's just it's coming back into popularity it's one of those things that it loses and then it comes back and then yeah yeah yeah. archery definitely goes in waves yes so on the negative side i think because there's so many of those groups um attracting attention to hunters in general Mm -hmm. that i think some people that are that were out of both loops like they're not a hunter and they're not with the the protesters right um that are seeing all of this are now like oh like that's a new new door that's opened up like oh okay i, I mm-hmm. didn't really they it's like they know that it existed but they didn't they didn't really think about it it's like okay i know my stuff from the grocery store comes from somewhere but yeah i'm not i don't really think much of it well yeah, yeah. so i think that it's the negative side of things that it's attracting when they, all this tension comes from these protest things that's going on. Right, right, right. Some people that might be looking into this, I wonder what this is about. And they look, oh, oh, wait a minute. Look at this. This might be interesting. Oh, let me, you know what? I want to try that. Let me go get a bow. Oh, look, I like it. And it kind of leads into other things is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like attracting that small percentage. I'm not saying it's a big percentage, but I'm saying it could be a small percentage of people that are being brought in. Right, right, right. That, 
are seeing all this negative crap go on that are are going but going to the other side saying like oh i want to try it and oh it's actually not a bad thing and you're either going to target or hunting right right well that's why well i mean i've mentioned before that like i mean some of the best archers in the world that are like in world competitions and whatnot Mm -hmm. none of them fucking hunt so archery is not just about hunting it's not i mean some people do it for sport but i mean yeah obviously some people do it for the sports side of it you know competitions and shooting right right you know not to be confused with sport like the trophy hunting yeah yeah exactly you know and it's just you know it's good that now now we see a lot more of the the the, the popularity but like i said i think the popularity of the women's side and the increasing of their of their um of their revenue and whatever from winning competitions has a lot to do with guys like greg Poole and bow junkie pushing them into the, the the limelight and I mean, I, I, he, as much as I fucking hate social media, he, he, I think it has a lot to do with it also because there are some women that are portraying everything mm-hmm. in a very, very positive light. Um, you know, Emily McCarthy's page is very like, you know, look, oh, it's her and her husband shooting and this and that. And we're practicing, you blah, know blah, 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 blah. You know, Sharon's photos are all very positive. There's no animals any fucking where, you know. Um, social media. Sam Levi, her shit right now is mostly fucking hysterical. Because everything has to do with her kids. One kid, the newborn, just doesn't fucking sleep. Right. You know, so <laughs> she she constantly mocks Eva Shockey because apparently uh, Lenny, Levi, um, Eva's daughter happens right. to sleep like 15 hours a day and the Morgan's kid sleeps like two hours. Listen, I got the same dirty looks when I would tell people that our, our son at three months slept through the night mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, you know, they're at a year and their kid still doesn't sleep through the night. Right, so exactly. I, I know <laughs> from that side of things. But, you know, social media is, uh, it, you know, it's a iffy thing. It, it's I don't think it's a negative and I don't think it's a positive. I think it's kind of floats in the middle. And then what you take out of it is kind of which direction you put it. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, if you choose to follow people that positively, posi- um, you said it right. Positively. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, motivate you and, and do things and stuff like that and send you into a right direction, then I think it's fine. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing wrong with social media. It's just people sharing their experiences throughout life. But then when you start going down these rabbit holes with some of these negative trolls out there that their purpose in life is just to put down others so they feel better about themselves. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then if you give in to that and you get into that whole whole thing, then, you know, um, it, then it becomes a negative issue. Like the one giveaway, there was a... um. It was, I don't even remember who they were for. That's horrible. But they were giving away some some of their hats or whatever. They were like hunting hats or something right. like that. So mm-hmm. if you tag, if you make oh, a comment, yeah, yeah. you the follow, one you tag. You tag. In, yes, I know what so, you're talking about. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll just enter in. I, I, like, I like giveaways because I like free shit. Who doesn't like free shit? Mm-hmm. So it's like two seconds of my day. And uh, I don't know what what compelled me to actually read this but the the comment right above mine it was a little lengthy so i was like eh, let me read it for some reason i don't know why and Sucking it starts in. it is it's like pulling you in it's like a fucking black hole it's like ah, i can't help it don't go into the light yeah exactly but you know this person and i can't remember it word for word but they they basically stated um i don't agree with what you do so don't bother sending me a friend request because I won't accept it. Um, so don't bother following me. I mean, it, it broke it down to basically like over and over and over again saying, don't send me a request because I'm not going to follow you. And don't expect me to, to request one because I don't want to follow you. So and I don't agree with what you do. So just, you know, I don't want to have anything to do with you. And I mean, it it was kind of like a... It, the same thing over and over, but they wasted how how long of their day to stop, go into their page, look around to realize what they do, and then go and comment just to put that they they were not going to look into what they do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I kind of that, that's that that we 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 I've said it before. I think it was in actually one of our out uh, road clips, whatever. That's that whole. It's all about me. Look, 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 look what I wrote. I'm going to try and scumbag you 
But look at what look 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 what I wrote about this. I, yeah. And Fine. I don't, you don't want to fucking just block people. the fucking person. I really Jesus don't. Christ. You know, it comes back to the whole, and this has gone on for a while. I mean, shit. When Howard the uh, Howard Stern started, you know, coming on air with the radios. Okay. With the um, <clears throat> all of his, you know, issues that he had with uh, censorship and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I mean, it goes back to the whole thing. If you don't. If you don't like it, don't don't listen to it. If you don't if you don't want to watch it, turn it off. I mean, you have that choice, but then people just don't they they don't want they don't want to do that. They want to force themselves to listen to it, even if they don't agree with it. And then they want to uh, you know, put their comment out there and and make it like it's it's some kind of fact and they want to bully people into actually thinking, you know, that their way is the only way and yeah. You know, and it's it's unfortunate that there's people out there, but mm-hmm. we're never going to have everyone agree on everything. Oh, no, no, no. It's never, ever, ever, ever going to happen. But uh, when it gets to the point of, of people getting nasty and mean and, um, like, you know, going out in, like, in front of Antler and protesting and getting violent, and especially when the other party is not getting violent, they're not being aggressive back to you. It's just unfortunate, is what it is. Oh yeah, that those people are out there that exist, and I mean, I guess that is their purpose in life is to create waves for maybe something bigger is going to come out of this. Maybe something it'll create something better that will, you know, in the end be right. Absolutely, you know, better outcome. You know, uh, right. And just to backtrack real quick because I actually forgot to mention one woman that's uh, huge right now on the archery scene. And it's just because I happen to be going through Instagram and it popped up from Bowtech. Paige Gore has won the Reading uh, trail shoot for the fifth time in a row. Good for her. Yeah, absolutely. Dom- and she's another one. I'm just like super positive woman for archery and shit like that. Right. So, you know, her, who's, she hangs out with Sarah Sonicson, the, the ch- chick from Denmark that practices with Stefan Hansen from PFC. I can't remember names. Well, I'm getting better at this now. I'm still horrible um, at names. But, you know, I mean, that, that's what I mean. Like, there, there are some women that can can do it. I mean, it, it's the ones that I said, like the doers. <laughs> so. Well, it, you know, it just goes to entitlement. There's people that are like, oh, there's no reason why you should be separated. But then, honestly, I don't think it's it's for the recognition. I honestly think it all stems with the people who are the, like, the source. They're the host of the virus. Like, you got the mob, and then there's a host. There's, like, the, there's a virus, and there's this place that it starts, and there's that one fucking person. And you know what? I think that it all stems from money. It's nothing but oh, yeah, money. Yeah. They're like, oh, no, there's no reason why they should ha- get paid more than us. And it, They don't look at skill. They don't look at anything else. All they, they look at is money, and then they just push it, and they just warp it and create it into this fucking thing that becomes bigger than you know what they originally started out right so now, it, the, the thing i actually have, have re- I've begun to realize and this might sound conceited <laughs> a bit but have you noticed anything like except for one person that i've mentioned uh really all of the women that happen to be in the top all happen to have one thing in common their husbands all shoot with them. Hmm. Every single one of them. Emily McCarthy and Dan. Okay. You got Paige and her husband. I'm sorry, dude. I don't remember your name offhand. <laughs> the other dude? Yeah, exactly. Sharon and Jack. I mean, hell, uh, the, the one competition last month, Sharon and Jack were first for men and women, and Dan McCarthy and Emily were second. Huh. So it was like husband and wife and husband and wife. So, you know, I don't know if maybe, you know, the whole couple thing makes them stronger or makes them better or whatever. Maybe theory or I'm just blowing it out of my ass because I'm fucking married to you and we shoot together and we yeah, kind see, of I feed can't... off each other's vibe when we shoot together. Well, that's the thing, though. You're always shooting in pairs. So you're not right. always. Yeah, but they train together is my point. No, that's, I just backed that up. They okay. They shoot in pairs. Mm-hmm. So 
when we go like to shoot, you're always, um, you know, adjusting me on things. Mm -hmm. I can't adjust you on things because you've been shooting longer than me. So I can't pick up on a lot of that stuff. No, it's just right now. I mean, my my form is so ingrained to me that the only thing I can do is actually take a video of you and you can watch yourself. And then I watch where I fuck up myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is fine. I mean, you've done that a bunch of times and that's helped me out with things. But. That that's the point is that we're always shooting in pairs. So mm-hmm. That might be the other thing is that since you always have a shooting partner, right? You always have someone there saying, "Oh, hey, I noticed this," or "Hey, you know, watch this," or oh, oh, that was it's the not other like thing. it's not like you're shooting by yourself where you're kind of guessing. Where I mean, if you've done it for years and years and you already know, mm-hmm. or if you're a teacher or or whatnot, right? That's another thing. But most of the time, it, it does help to have an outside point of view. Mm-hmm. On things. No, Any, I agree. Anything. Absolutely. What were you just going to say? No, because I, I was actually thinking, um, because earlier we had mentioned releases, and uh, two of the people that are, like, you know, of the, the top archers that we mentioned, mm-hmm. both shoot wrist rockets. Hey, man, Cam Haynes uh, shoots well, one. Oh, actually, I don't even, well, Cam's, a, Cam's not a competition shooter. Cam's a professional hunter. No, but he's but a pretty Paige damn shoots, good shot. Paige Gore shoots with a wrist strap release, mm-hmm. and so does Jack. Jack Wallace shoots with a wrist strap there, release. You know what? I mean, so I mean, it doesn't. Listen, it doesn't always have to be a, a hinge release or a back tension release or a four finger release. Whatever gets your arrow from your bow to your target's X, the closest mm-hmm. is what you need to use. Fuck whatever anyone else is using, or don't, this person or no, that person. No, I'm not person. saying don't try them. Try them. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not saying don't try them. But I'm saying if that's what works best for you, then use it. Don't don't worry about whatever anyone else is using. Mm-hmm. If you find a, a niche that you fall into that works better for you, then then that's what works better for you. You know, um, the release I went back to, in, instead of using the forefinger, using the um, the wrist strap. Yeah, the detonator. Now is what I'll do is maybe try different brands. Right. For a better adjustment, I should say. Mm-hmm. I, I, I do notice like a lot of the people that are shooting wrist straps, like yeah. competition-wise, most of them seem to be using single hook styles like you're using right now. Right. So, <clears throat> so you know, it, it's, it's not that it's a the lower level. It's just it's. Just it's a different. Release. That's it. It's just a fucking release. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. You know, it's just like your sights and your um, your arrow rest. It's it's just a part of the hole, and whatever that hole works, it's just like the gears. Mm-hmm. If one's not running right for you, then you know you gotta change it. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So just stop comparing yourself to everyone else and just do what's best for you. Mm-hmm. Only compare yourself if you know you keep hitting perfect. Every single shot, and you know you're still in the same spot. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You got nothing else? No, I'm actually good. I'm 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 pretty much out of topics right now for this week. You know, it, it's not you threw that... that last topic at me, and we went on a 35 minute freaking rant about it almost. I didn't know you were timing. On I no, I wasn't. I just happened to look down, and notice that we are an hour and 23 minutes in. So. You know the the problem that I have that I can go on forever about is this whole the whole movement going on with the um, vegetarians and the genders and the all those issues going on. Mm-hmm. So that's where I got to cut myself off because those are topics that, you know, uh, we can talk about on either other podcasts or. Which we usually do. That's when the humbug show comes into place when we uh, guest spot on his. Well, if he does. But he hasn't actually, we haven't done one of those yet. It's it's mostly been on parenting. Yeah, yeah. That's and when I just sit there and he sits there and we're like, okay, we're just let the wives take care of this. Yeah. But, it, you know, if you get me on the other topics with these. Uh, people protesting when they don't have the knowledge to back them and I really can go on and on and on and on but I know everyone doesn't want to really listen to that no not on this podcast no so I cut myself off Mm -hmm. so I guess that's it for me right now we're still looking um, side note for a range finder still looking still looking Fucking range finders, man. It's like becoming the thorn in my side. 
Well, I mean, we can we can get one. It's just you've been looking for sales and there hasn't been any. Because I like sales. Yes, we know that. Everyone knows I like sales. Mm-hmm. So, um, and if you uh, want, go to my page, shootingskulls.etsy.com. For the next week, it's uh, 25% off pre-made bow slings. Mm-hmm. I do custom as well. And I got to start plugging my own stuff more. Mm-hmm. That you do. Yes. So it's uh, shootingskulls.etsy.com or shooting underscore skulls for Instagram. I like seeing pictures. And yeah. Okay. I don't, um, I don't really know. I don't have a whole spiel for that. I, I think it's, uh, I, I don't like to listen when other people do it, so. My right. short, sweet. Short, simple. If you need a bow sling, go look. If you're curious, go to my IG account. Um, if you don't care, then turn us off. I don't really give a shit. So I'm only aiming toward the people who actually give a shit. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, we will see you on the next one. Everybody no, have fun. Why we not? Won't, we won't okay, see them. Okay, you'll be listening to us on the next one. Is that better? We'll be talking. Okay. Have fun, folks. Go out and shoot.